What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at the laning stage of an Underlord offlane game, and the reason why we're doing this here today is I was talking in Discord with the player named Ebola Bear, as you're going to see here in this video, and he told me that he does not like pineapple on pizza. Now guys, what do you think about that? I want to ask you, what do you think about that? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you believe pineapple and ham belong on pizza? I personally feel like this depends. I think if you're getting it on Domino's pizza or like Papa John's, it's top tier but definitely not on like your, your standard New York slice. Some of you might have no clue what I'm talking about, but nonetheless, leave in the comment section down below, you know, your opinion on pineapple and ham pizza. But yeah, let's get into the landing stage video of Underlord. Oh, and on top of that, if you, uh, if you like pizza, or you like Dota, or you like this channel, I don't know, if you like something, like the video, because that means you like the video. And I like when you like the video, because it helps the video do well, uh, which is generally partially my goal. My goal is to grow the channel, and of course, to continue educating you guys on the game of Dota 2 to the best of my ability. So yeah, if you want to see more content from me, like the video and uh, yeah, comment down below. On top of that, if you're interested in becoming better at Dota as soon as possible and your goal is to get to the next MMR bracket ASAP, I recommend you sign up for the Game Leap website. I'm going to be making a lot of in-depth courses and I plan later today to make a core video. I'm not going to tell you exactly what video it is. You're going to have to sign up for GameLeap.com with the discount link down in the description down below to figure out. But yeah, Later today, I'll be making a video that will be posted over there very, very soon. So yeah, if you guys basically enjoy my content and you have some extra money, I recommend you check out GameLeap.com and considering signing up. I think it's extremely worth it and I hope you guys give it a shot. Let me know in Discord if you do. All right, getting into the landing stage, we're going to be, as I said, following the Underlord starting item build. I would say it's fine. Maybe I, it, like personally, I would add a branch just because that's how I am. I'm going to spend all my gold. Going for this rune is extremely inappropriate. This is unbelievably low skill right off the bat. Guys. Please stop contesting runes if you're at a disadvantage. Now, if the CM was here, I still would think it's questionable. Oh my gosh, she has frostbite level one. But nonetheless, this is completely unacceptable. Now the fact, oh my lord, this is so low skill. So the ogre and jug should both be hitting you. And then when you turn around, ogre should stun you, right? So now he's gonna do all this damage to you. I don't know why ogre could have hit you the entire time. Holy, oh God, oh my. All right, do you guys see the problem? I want to ask you all a question, a very important question. Should Ogre Magi have been hitting the Underlord the entire time? My man bought an Aura of Venom and he's not hitting the Underlord. How does that make any sense? What did you buy the item for? Like, what is the purpose of this item if you're not going to hit the enemy when they're out of position? So he walks out of position, then my man's like, oh, we got the rune. Uh. <laughs> that was my Ogre impression. I Hopefully you guys like that, but... No, in all seriousness, you can't start the lane by burning two tangos. Please, guys, stop. You almost should have died there. If the Ogre Magi was even slightly competent, you should have died or at least have to burn another two tangos or yourself. Um, so it's just not worth it. Like, the Jug versus Underlord lane can go either way, right? Because Jug can spin you down with his power spikes, right? His level three power spike in, in particular. And therefore, the lane can get pretty hard. So honestly, you just can't afford to, like, trade HP so unnecessarily like that. For a bounty rune that I don't even think you got. Like, you didn't even get it. So like, GG, man, that's just such a terrible start to the game. These are mistakes that you guys just have to avoid at all costs. All right, so right off the bat, you know, how I would be looking at this lane is I'm going to play defensive. I'm not going to do too much. Uh, basically, what I would be looking to do if I was you is chill. If they overextend, I'll hit them. Right? If the jug walks past the creep wave, I'll hit them. But other than that, last hitting in the nine, right? Just keeping the wave back, building up my damage. And then when I have high damage, if the jug overextends, I'll hit him. On top of that, uh, yeah, I would definitely continuously eat tangos. So this trade is okay. It's okay. You know, the, the ogre match, I walk past the creep wave. So it's not bad. Um, you are going to have to chill. You should eat to be eating a tango here. Like guys, it always triggers me when I see people missing like 200 health and they just don't eat a tango. If you get gun on right now, you can't turn the fight, right? But if you have a tango going the entire time, you have the potential to win the trade. Uh, and it's a big difference. Like little things like this really add up. So, okay, pull the way back. Really good creep aggro. I would argue that your creep aggro is definitely very, very good. So here you should go for the deny. Nice, cool, cool. No need to Q yet, right? Qing would just push the lane. I think the lane's in a good spot. You can keep the back. You are gonna have to secure this range creep. So like here, I would have considered just leaving this melee creep to secure the range. Why would I say that? Because I would rather secure this, get the gold, which is actually more than, than the melee creep, and not get denied, right? Jug can't deny this, but he can deny this. So this is obviously a much higher priority, and it likely gets denied. Never mind, Juggernaut is legitimately AFK. Now, but hopefully you guys see what I meant with that range creep. Like, that that's, in my opinion, unacceptable to just let a range creep basically be denied. It didn't get denied, but, you know, Dota. All right, so yeah, definitely not too much I would argue with. I, I do like the boots, actually. I think it helps you disengage from spin. 
I personally would have considered taking the second point at Atrofiora. I don't even feel like you're getting to use the Firestorm. I also don't think Firestorm is particularly good against Chug. Like, it can be fine against Chug because you can kill the Creep Wave so he can't go on you. You know what I mean? Like, that's an argument you can make. But at the same time, for how the lane's been going, which is very defensive, right? It's been very chill. I probably would have taken my second point in E only because, you know, that's how the lane is going, right? If the lane is going chill, the lane is playing passive. I'm just going to take my E to, to slowly win the trades and continue to deny more creeps because you're doing a good job and you actually have, in my opinion, the right idea of how this lane should be played, which is just last and deny. I mean, that's what Underlord does. Please deny this creep. Oh my God, deny it. <sighs> that was close. You should have denied it first because... Uh, it, you just didn't have to be that close, but okay. Yeah, I mean, overall, the priorities in this lane are really good. Honestly, I would start using my Q, though. Like, I, I do have an issue at this point. I wouldn't necessarily use the Q, actually, to push in the lane, because I think the lane's in a fine spot. Like, you're chilling, you're getting last hits and denies. I wouldn't, like, I'm not mad about this. But at the same time, if you have a, a CM aura, you know what I mean? Like, if you have the CM aura, and on top of that, you bought a mango, and you're buying a soul ring, you should start using your Q, even if it's just, like, 100 damage, right? I don't think he has a stick. So he doesn't have a stick yet. You could try to force him to spin because a lot of players will have this bad reaction where they're like, oh, I'm getting Firestorm, I need to spin. And then they'll spin and then you, you know, they can't go on you. So basically you're relieving pressure and shipping people down. So that's something I would have considered um, using Firestorm actually just to secure the range creep, right? So what I do is if Jug is next to the range creep, Firestorm, secure the range creep, move back. You've harassed him, you killed the range creep and you're putting yourself in position for a very, very, very favorable trade, which would heavily benefit you, because instead, you almost lose another range creep. Now, Juggernaut is not a good player. He is Ancient One, which... All right, so he's relatively good, but in my opinion, he's making it... Oh, my God. Blech. So, guys, I want to ask you a question. How should Jug and Ogre Magi be pressuring the Underlord right now? Think about it. How? What should they do? They should probably stun into Orb of Venom auto attacks into a spin. Now, how come that isn't happening? Probably because Ogre is, like, Guardian 5. And I'm being real, guys. Like, if you're Guardian 5, don't say... I'm not like this ogre. Like, I always read comments like this where it's like, I'm not like the ogre. No, you are. You you might just be bad in different ways, but nonetheless, though, you should be getting pressured a lot more. So I it really triggers me that you are just casually missing 200 health and don't eat tangos. Like, they can go on you. I know they don't have spin right now, but man, like, every single time I watch a player that is like 3k, 4k, or obviously below, the regen management is just abysmal. So finally, you start using the fire spirit, which is good. Like, what you just did there, I think you should have done a, a couple more times already. Like, I don't think never using firestorm is a good idea so um yeah i, I would have made that adjustment much earlier and yeah your, your tango usage still i know i'm saying it again but man i know you're casually regening and they're not pressuring you but that's not the point right because right here you'd be slightly higher hp and it'd make the trade better now you get first blood all right good job you're 22 and 12 are you doing well yes um but could you have put a little bit more pressure i would argue yeah i would also argue if i was you i'd be calling the cm over to go on the jug every so often right not to kill him but i don't think 3k, 4k players understand why they don't actually crush lanes or they'd why they get pooped on if they were against a 7k player. Because 7k players chip you down in lane, right? They take the little gaps to go on you and they're willing to commit their resources and that's why they have to buy more regen, right? And things like that. That's why they have to expend and, and purchase more regen because they're able and willing to commit more rounds of spells more often. So keep that in mind. If you don't feel like you're dominating your landing stage, maybe you need to just make more attempts, Right? Just make more attempts. If you're the aggressor, the majority of the time, it's going to be favorable. Like, if you commit your spells right away, you can always back off and wait for the cooldown to come up. But think about it. If you use a 12-second cooldown, and then 5 seconds later, the Ogre Magi comes over and stuns, whose spell is going to come off cooldown earlier? Right? His 11 or your 12? Obviously, your 12, because he's reacting 6 seconds late, because he's playing defensive and not offensive. Um, which is definitely something to keep in mind. So yeah, here, okay, I like these hits. I I feel like you could have killed the Ogre Magi with the help of the CM there. Man, this CM uh, skill build is just... Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, but nonetheless, yeah, that's something I would keep in mind, guys. So whenever you're doing well in a laning stage, you should always ask yourself, could I have done better, right? Never just be complacent. And in this case, what I would say you could have done better, I think your CS and denies are totally fine. Like, that's in a good spot. But I, I think you could have made a lot more attempts with the Firestorm and the help of the CM to force spin and just chip jug a little bit more, right? Just think about that. Also, I really hate this point in Pit of Malice that you're throwing so hard. Okay, you don't die, but this is, okay, this is a big issue. So this is really where a big misconception comes into play. So number one, you take Pit of Malice, I guess, to secure to kill. I don't really know why. I think if you're just playing Underlord, your goal is just to shove the lane and chill. So it's really unnecessary to take Pit of Malice. It's just, it's just trash at level one. It's so bad. 0.9 seconds, like, I understand it can cancel TPs and keep people in Firestorm, but I think it's pretty bad. 
But the misconception here is that you feel like you need to kill the Juggernaut. Guys, not true. Not true. And a lot of players do this. Basically, they get someone low. They're like, oh, wow, I have an opportunity to kill them. I guess I need to die of the tower. You don't need to kill this guy. All you need to do is zone him off the creeps and you've won. Your job is not... Like, the reason why you kill people is to open up the creep wave. Sure, getting the golden XP is useful and all. And if it's low committal, that's fine. But if your kill costs you a ton of resources, it is probably not a good kill. Unless it's on some high priority target in the landing stage, like someone who's 5-0. and Right? And then maybe it's okay. But this jug is, what, 0-1. You don't need to kill him. So what you do is you just kind of tank the tower here. Right, you tank like 200 damage there, then you go on him, which I don't necessarily disagree with this. You know, turning on him when spin ends, I'm cool with. I wish you ate a tango, like I wish you walked down and ate a tango. You have a big issue where you don't eat tango's min engagement, it's just a mistake. But nonetheless, right here, I back off. Now I know that's a hard thing to say against Chug, he does have a salve, he has a wand, tangos. He didn't skill healing ward because he's bad at the game. But nonetheless, I don't think you had to commit on him here. Like, this is where it becomes bad. You should understand, you're not killing him, man. You're not going to kill him. I know, I know he has no boots. But there's, like, almost a 0% chance you kill him without, obviously, trading your life. Especially when Ogre is coming behind you. So, this is where you kind of threw your lane. I think you had an opportunity to stabilize it there. Like, if you backed off, you could salv up, be full HP, chip down the jug, um, and rinse repeat. But instead, now you're stuck on, like, a relatively low amount of HP that they could actually... They could kind of go on you, you know what I mean? Like, if this Ogre and Jug synergize when Jug hits 5, maybe they can kill you now. Oh wow, actually, you get salved again. Uh, but that's the point, right? Now you kind of have to waste that salve, which could have came into play later on, right? Maybe you could have used that a little bit later on if you just didn't overcommit. So guys, please keep that in mind. Don't dive towers for kills unless it's, like, extremely safe or your hero is particularly good at it, right? There are some examples, like Timber Saw, right? Um, you, you can do that to tank the tower for the creeps and for reactive armor stacks. But at this point... All I would look to do if I was you is, I'm not going to dive the jug, right? Eh, don't care, don't care. Are you really going to be able to pressure this guy anymore if he's just chilling under his tower? Not really, right? Especially if he has the usual skill build of taking healing ward. What you should do instead is start amplifying farm. It's to the point in the game where you're doing a good job last hitting, your farm is great, you have CM aura, you push the jug under tower, and that's why I recommend you put the third point in Firestorm because you don't need this to kill. You don't even need to pressure him. You're doing fine, like you have this advantage. A lot of people think as an offlane player, like, the way you win the game is just constantly running at the carry. While this can be true in certain matchups, let's say, uh, Timbersaw against Terrorblade, of course you want to run at him, right? Or maybe it's like, a Beastmaster against a, oh, I don't know, a PA that's behind, right? And, and you can dive the tower and pressure her. That can be good. But can an Underlord really dive a Jug in this scenario? Can you do much damage to him without him just healing? Unlikely, in my opinion. Unlikely. So here, instead of wasting this time where you're just kind of running in circles like it's a, you know, you're a little kid at a, at a circus, what you want to do instead is just go kill this camp! Like, what is this? This is such a waste of time. It's just a waste of time. Now, I'm sure I make these mistakes in my own games, guys. Right? But at the end of the day, if you're trying to get better, you need to look for efficiency because now you cut the tree and you're like, oh, I guess I could have, I could have done that. You also could have stacked it and tried to kill it with the CM, which I think you guys realized as well. So, you know, firestorming the wave, that's cool. Pushing the lane. But why aren't you just taking the camp? I don't understand. Like, what's the... You don't need the pull. It's seven minutes in. Like, this pull is okay. It's okay. But you could have killed two camps, right? And that's the little bit of efficiency that can separate you from winning the game or not, right? Hitting your timing or not. So here you go in. I also don't know why you took your ulti. I mean, it can be okay. Like, you can TB back to base and then come back out. But I'm just not a, I'm not a huge fan of this. Like... I think this is, at level 6, you usually take the value point of Pit, and then you take this at level, like, 9 or 8. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this build. I, I just feel like the maxing Firestorm is fundamentally what your hero wants to do. So you can shove the lane jungle, shove the lane jungle, rinse repeat. Like, this Pet of Malice did absolutely nothing. Actually, you know, it sort of did something, but... I just don't feel like this is... Oh no, he's gonna kill your CM. <laughs> this is so messy. <laughs> okay. Ah, what your soul ring? What? Ah, uh, no! <laughs> what? Why did you click soul ring? Huh? What? I mean, I don't know. I guess that's just a misjudgment, but you just fed this guy, like, an unbelievably large amount of XP. How much did he get from that? That must have been insane. Oh my lord, he got so much from that. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> and this is what I mean, guys. So I want you to think back to two minutes ago, and I know, uh, like, a lot of people just can't watch these type of videos because they're very, like, analytical, and I expect this video not to honestly do that well <laughs> just because I'm going so much in depth about minor things, but this is how you get to the top level, in my opinion. You'd be very, very, very critical. 
But basically, let's think back to two minutes when he dove the jug. Imagine he didn't dive the jug and he had 400 HP right now, right, more, because he got a salve from the CM. Then he took this trade. Or he continued to chip down the jug with, with a level 3 Firestorm. How much different would the game look, right? Couldn't you just bully the jug out with, with the higher level of Firestorm and by playing passive? Not passive passive, but like not diving tower passive, right? Where you're in between. You could have done that. You could have also maybe farmed the cloak and just shipped that out which in my opinion is good. I also would consider buying stick on Underlord. I think it's a good item on the hero, like a, or just a full wand. And then yeah, you wouldn't die there because now all of a sudden this Ogre Magi's game is just 10 times better. Like if I'm this Ogre, I'm like, woo -hoo! I'm almost level six, baby. I'm going Midas. <laughs> but nonetheless, you could be level seven right now if you just amplified your farm and took Firestorm instead of doing all this like dive shenanigans. This Q is kind of a waste. Um, I feel like you could just hit the jug here. Yeah, a bit late on that recognition. You do you do figure it out anyway uh, at some point. But yeah, I mean, I'd easily give you like an ancient rating on this game, which obviously in my opinion is, isn't that high, but you're doing a good job. Like, I'm not gonna lie, you're probably almost top net worth. Okay, there's a Meepo, sure. Like, such is life, right? You're losing to a Meepo, but you're playing this lane well, right? For everyone watching this, this is a pretty good performance. Like, for, for most players, this is like pretty top tier. I just think that these little issues, um, even though, pfft, just killing under these little issues are, are going to be what's preventing you from carrying this game, right? Because you could probably be level like eight and a half, almost nine now, if you didn't make a lot of these minor mistakes and amplified your farm and didn't dive and, you know, uh, use your region a little bit better. So that, that's that's kind of how I see Dota in a nutshell. But I'm going to go a little bit further into this game. I Hopefully you enjoyed this concept, this more like advanced coaching that I would do, usually do with more like a, a coaching student. Because, yeah, I, I don't know. I think usually people get bored of this type of stuff because they don't want to actually accept that all these little things matter. How you win in Dota is a culmination of, you know, correct plays or not wrong plays. You guys see what I'm saying? Like, it's adding up all the small things. That's how you get better at Dota. It's not about one large thing, right? It's it's really about fixing all the little mistakes. And here, okay, good ulti, good hood. He get out. I definitely would consider Wand, though. I mean, rushing the pipe is fine. It's gonna help you group up with your team. I just really like Wand. Like, if I'm playing solo queue and I'm having a good lane, I'm gonna buy a Wand. Why, you may ask? Well, Wand is kind of like the best fighting item in Dota. It just lets you turn engagements. So yeah, if I'm having a good game on basically any hero, I'm going to buy a wand to continue to leverage that, right? It's just such a good fighting item. So really good map awareness here. Scouting at the Meepo. Okay. You can't really go to the jungle. So this is fair. I, okay. You almost killed him. That was good pressure. Good synergy with the CM. And uh, yeah, this is where I'm probably going to wrap up the episode. You end up losing this game. Oh, wow. You guys actually get stomped. Okay. I mean, I'd have to look at the rest. I'm sure you make a ton of mid-game mistakes. You know what? I'll do a little bit more analysis just, just for everyone watching this video. Let, let's get into it. All right, first things first, you take this Ironwood tree. I mean, it is super good for you. Like, it's unbelievably good. I personally would try to give it to my PO. You know, if I'm playing a greedy solo queue game, though, it is a really good thing to take. You know, it's going to let you win trades. But nonetheless, I would consider giving it to my, uh, even especially Morphling. Like, this item is god tier in Morphling because it gives him 12 stats. You know what I mean? That, that he can shift. So it is far better if you take the broom handle and he takes the ironwood tree in my opinion. I don't I don't think it's very close. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, maybe this is some Meepo Smurf game. I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. It does not look like it. So yeah, if I was you this game, what I'd be concerned about is maybe I didn't take hard farm. Like here, you could just be pushing in topside and taking all the farm, maybe even like getting the Meepo to kill you or like, hopefully you guys know what I mean by that. He, you could get the Meepo to run at you not necessarily to the point where you want to die, but you could get the Meepo to run at you, create the pressure, right? Create the, open up the map. But in all fairness, the peel is farming top right now. So this is okay. Like this is all right. You do want to just keep pressuring in the lane. So I, I'm glad that you're doing that. I just wish you took a little bit more camps in between. I think there's quite a bit of opportunities where you could have just killed an extra jungle camp or something like that. And let's look at this. So there's, there's a mistake here for sure. So you do want to pressure in the lane, but you don't want to kill yourself. So, okay, you were going for the tower. You were hitting it. They glyph. Yeah, okay, so when they glyph here, guys, I just want to teach you a little general tip about Dota. Now, I understand this is hindsight on my end, you know what I mean? Like, this is obviously hindsight, but something you'll learn very often is if people glyph a tower that's low, it very often means that they're going to TP to it, right? This is something that I've kind of just learned over time from my experience. If people glyph, don't overcommit, you know what I mean? Like, I know them denying it's a big deal. Maybe if you realize, oh, okay, they're not here, you can go back in. Or if someone's trying to deny it, you could say, okay, he's trying to deny it. It's probably a 1v1. But here, you just stayed in vision the entire time. You made it really obvious for what you were going to do. I would have at least ran into the trees to kind of like disalarm them, right? Make them think I'm not doing anything. Uh, because you end up getting wrapped on. That was a really good play by the Mars, to be fair. Uh, you, you did react properly at the end of it, but just keep that in mind. If people pop Glyph, 
and you're the only one putting map pressure, like think about the enemy team's perspective there. You're the only hero they see on the map, right? Your PL and Morphling are farming, like, as they should be to some extent, right? Like, what do you expect from them? So your job as an offlaner this game is to split push without dying, right? You want to keep forcing attention without dying. That's the key word here. Now, if you die, it's going to happen, right? You're going to make mistakes. But at the end of the day, and I'm going to end the episode here. I know this is a bit of a weird episode or a weird video, but I think there's a ton of value in it. Uh, just keep in mind, if you have a lot of farming heroes, you don't necessarily, like, unless you're making plays with your line or CM, that's going to force you to dive heroes and then naturally die to rotations. That can be okay. If you're diving with the line and the CM to kill people, that's fine. But when you're like split pushing by yourself here, I would put a large emphasis on avoiding ganks. So if I don't see the entire enemy team on the map and I'm pushing a tower and I'm the only one on my team showing, I'm going to assume that they're going to run at me, right? This has to pop in your head. Okay, what does the enemy team see? They only see me. They're going to run at me, right? And hopefully that makes a lot of sense because I think that death there is pretty game losing. I also think if you're actually buying Shivas, I'm really not a huge fan of that, to be honest. I would probably just prefer you to see a buy a Vanguard because... The Vanguard is going to actually make you tanky. It gives you value with the with the pipe because pipe gives you a lot of effective HP. It doesn't give you actual health, but it gives you effective health. So when you have an item like pipe, you want to generally buy some health, right? That synergizes with it, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It's similar to when you buy damage items, you want to follow it up with attack speed, right? Hopefully that makes sense. You know, you kind of need to balance things in Dota. So I wouldn't want to just have a bunch of like slow items there are situations in dota where you can do this but if i was you instead of buying shivas as my defensive item i would buy crimson because i think crimson synergizes significantly better with pipe and i think it is just really good against jug and meepo overall like i don't think shivas necessarily that much better you know it slows their attack speed which is great it's good against meepo by all means but i think crimson just makes you much much tankier uh, overall against these heroes especially jug so yeah, here, I think you get afraid. Okay, I know I keep saying I'm going to end the episode, but I'm really going to end it here. This is my last point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this like very uh, advanced take on laning. I do hope it helps you. And guys, remember, apply the concepts that I'm saying here to every single hero. What I'm teaching and, and saying here is not just some underlord thing. On top of that, man, these open slots are unbelievably triggering. You should have like a wind lace or a wand or a stick at least. Like, man, having two open slots, like the, the small items in Dota are the best items. Either carry a smoke a stick, a wind lace, a wand, like something like this. Please don't just walk around with two open item slots. It's so disgusting, and it's just a bad habit in Dota because small items are valuable. Their issue is that they clog slots, but it's okay to clog your slots early because they're cheap and you can sell them and you're going to get value out of them. And then here, yeah, I think you make a major mistake. You want to leave the mid lane open for your team. You can defend mid lane as Underlord for like the early game. If they're trying to take your tier one mid, you can defend that, right? Your job is often a tower defender. But you don't want to defend the mid tier two because at this point it's very safe farm it's hard for the enemy team to just like die this i mean they theoretically can but it's very easy for your team to ward it i think because you died bottom you're kind of panicking that you can't get out on the map this is where like a legend or an ancient player just can't come back they can't come back from the hard games because they die once and then there goes all their their willingness to take risks right you have to take a risk this game look at your team comp you were so afraid of dying you're like peel back back but what is he supposed to do? This guy needs to hit some camps. Now, unfortunately, the camps are gone, but he needs to do this. What you need to be doing is chilling here, queuing this from the trees. This is what you have to be doing right now. Your positioning is so low skill. I'm being real. It's so bad right now. You have to be taking farm on the map to get to your next item and bringing the attention to yourself. You do not want your Morphling or Peel to get ganked. Your win condition is not you. It is your teammates. So you should be chilling here, queuing the wave and trying to get them to dive you because then... You can buy time, and if you die, it will cost them a lot of resources. It will create a lot of space for the peel and morph. And instead, you're just literally chilling under your tier 2 tower, which is very, very bad to be doing in a game like this. Your team is greedy. You need to take the dangerous farm when your team is greedy, as an underlord, as an offlaner, right? So now you TP late. It's way too late. This should have been your second or third Q already. The tower would be almost full health. And uh, yeah, Morphling got kicked out of top as well because you were doing that to a large extent, right? I really do mean that. Um, so yeah, I just wish you stayed bottom. I wish you would take the wards and place them down. Like guys, please, if you have to play dangerous and you know you have to play dangerous, take the wards. Take the wards. And yeah, I, I stated in my case about this, this, uh, played mail compared to Vanguard. Like Vanguard, like look at the difference. Vanguard is, is only 500 more gold. It gives you a ton of health, a lot of HP regen, and then block. Obviously the block is good against their team comp. I don't think I have to convince anyone of that. And yeah, here you just rotate towards mid again. Like, man, this is so bad. It's so bad. Even I would I would yell at Morphling to some extent. Someone, I really want someone to be taking this farm. I know it's dangerous, but look at the state of the game. 
Do you think you can just chill the win? No! You have almost no map control. Someone has to take the risk. It could be CM, it could be you, it could be the, the Lion. Now, the reason why I think it particularly should be you and you should take particular responsibility for it is because you're playing Underlord, who naturally has some of the best wave clear in the game. You also have one of the best ways to get out. You're also tanky. You also don't even have to show to, to push the wave. You can literally hide in the trees and do it. So when you're taking the safest farm on the map, which is this mid lane, in my opinion, right? This is no joke, the safest if it pushes in, you're griefing your carries. You just grief their game. You're telling them, the, what do you mean push now? You can't push mid tier one. This is the worst place in Dota for you possibly to fight. Anyone who walks up is just going to get arenaed and basically insta die. Even though both of your carries could get out of it. It's still just a bad scenario uh, to put them in. So now this TP top is just terrible. Like, are you going to actually take more safe farm away from the PL? Are you, do you understand how much you are griefing right now, right? And this, this is a hard thing for people to understand. I really don't think you thought about what your role is in this game. What is your role? And I'm repeating some more time. Hopefully you guys learned a ton now about the offlane, about the laning stage. I really think this was, uh, I think it was a good video in my opinion, a lot of value. What is your PL supposed to do now? Look at the map. What does PLs play? Hit some jungle creeps? That stinks compared to being able to take a lane and then jungle creeps. So yeah, this honestly just hurts me to see. I wish you were either bottom or something. Okay, this jug. <laughs> Imagine Omni slashing a morphling. That's... Oh boy. And now, look, you just screwed it. You see what I mean? Look at this. Morphling and PL are like sort of forced to take the hard farm. You, you see what's happening right now? You were forcing these two heroes. I mean, realistically, they could be playing a little bit safer, but it still is bad for them. Even the safe farm, it's because it's just not a lot. They still could get ganked. And you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to take the safe farm. Like, this isn't that safe, to be honest, but it's it was safe when it was pushed into your tier two. That's for sure. But nonetheless, I've given my opinion on this game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned quite a lot about map movement, laning stage, advanced concepts overall. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one and peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're gonna see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.